Right. Well, in recent research uh, with my co-authors Alan Benson and Danielle Lee, we examined the question of what explains the very large uh, gender gap in promotion rates. Um, so across the U.S., uh, on average, women are about 13 percent less likely to be promoted within a given year compared to men in the same company. Now, to investigate this question, uh, we looked at data on over 30,000 management track workers at a very large retail company in the U.S. Uh, what this company does when it considers promotion decisions is it factors in uh, two things. First, demonstrated performance so far, uh, but it also makes a forecast about the management potential of each uh, person working at the company. First, we just want the best people and the best talent in each position within the firm. Uh, so if any process is biased against a particular group, that means that we're not drawing upon the best available talent with any firm or organization. The second reason why the gender promotion gap is important is that it helps to explain gender differences in pay. Uh, women in our firm are paid about 13 percent less than men, and we find that 70 percent of this gap is due to men and women working in different positions within the firm's hierarchy. Uh, the remaining gap is due to men and women actually getting different pay, conditional on the same position. Uh, but most of the gap is due to men and women operating at different levels. Okay? So getting promoted to a higher level really matters for lifetime income for men and women. Women are rated as higher performance uh, than men at this company. However, they are also rated as having lower management potential. And this difference in ratings of management potential can explain approximately half of why women at this firm are less likely to be promoted than men. Uh, our second main finding is that uh, forecasts of potential seem to underestimate women's future contributions to the firm. Um, so for men and women with the same potential rating, the women, if they're promoted, actually subsequently outperform. And they're also more likely to contribute to the firm uh, by staying with the firm. There are some uh, people out there who believe that this could be due to women having just lower performance at their jobs. And this doesn't need to be because women are less capable. But there's a thought that because women um, have a, a greater share of child rearing responsibilities, they may have uh, less effort or time to place into work, or they may have less ambition to progress in the hierarchy in work if they expect to leave in future years uh, to take care of children. Um, we found in our setting that this does not seem to be play a major role. If anything, women within our firm demonstrate higher performance as evaluated by their managers. It's really through being perceived as having lower potential uh, that the women uh, get lower promotion rates. Uh, we also looked at another uh, potential explanation, which is that perhaps women are being viewed as having lower future contributions to the firm because managers believe that they are more likely to leave the firm. So the idea here is even if you're a very talented, hardworking worker, uh, you can't contribute to the firm in the future if you leave the firm. Right? Uh, and what we find in their data is we look at all the various reasons people might leave this firm. For example, to exit the workforce or to work for another firm. Overall, the exit rates are actually higher for the men. Okay? Um, so we shouldn't be thinking of women as being less likely to contribute to the firm simply because they're more likely to exit. It's actually the exit rates go the opposite way. Part of the reason why making forecasts of potential is so difficult is that there's no agreed upon definition of what it means to be high potential. Uh, our research is partly motivated um, by other research by Alice Eagley and others on this idea that role congruity theory may impact our perceptions of whether a woman is suitable for management. So the idea behind role congruity theory uh, is that we have some stereotypes of what it means to be a good manager. Uh, that usually means that the manager is assertive, competitive, dominant, execution oriented, etc. Uh, and these are traits that we typically associate more with men rather than women. 
Um, so this theory, I think, is interesting to me because it's not necessarily about us having negative stereotypes of women. We might view women as being conscientious or hardworking. But because these are not the same stereotypes that we associate with successful management, then we are more, less likely to forecast that women have high management potential. Forecasts of potential are valuable insofar as uh, we know from previous research on the Peter Principle uh, that past performance is not a perfect predictor of someone's management uh, potential because management requires different skills. Uh, so this goes back to the old adage that the best sales worker may not uh, become the best manager of salespeople. So it's reasonable to consider other information, such as forecasts of how someone would perform when given new responsibilities as a manager. Uh, the problem here, though, is that forecasts of potential uh, is made in an environment with lots of uncertainty. It's very difficult to imagine how well someone would perform if given a set of new tasks. Uh, and in these types of forecasts, uh, unconscious biases, such as our perhaps stereotypes that women are not suited for management, may creep in and bias these forecasts. We believe that certain solutions may not work. For example, hiring more female managers to assess subordinates or just hiring more uh, skilled managers who are themselves highly rated to assess their subordinates. In our data, that doesn't really seem to make female subordinates better off or make them more likely to be promoted. Uh, instead, firms may want to um, assess both their conscious as well as unconscious bias. By unconscious bias, I mean maybe training managers to think through what are they using uh, to forecast potential and are they uh, suffering from role congruity theory when they imagine uh, these various characteristics such as assertiveness or competitiveness uh, that is associated with men. Uh, in terms of assessing conscious biases, uh, what we find in our data is men are being promoted and being assessed at higher potential, partly because they are more likely to threaten to leave. So there's this idea that if an employee goes to uh, his or her manager and says, I have an outside offer, or just even hints at this, then the manager may think, oh, this is a high talented person. Uh, I want to forecast that this person has high potential. What we see in our data is that uh, male workers at our firm have much higher perceived uh, risk of loss. So the managers think they are at more risk of losing their male subordinates, and these men are being rewarded for threatening to leave uh, with greater uh, promotion opportunities. Um, and I think it's an open question, how much do we want to reward threats of leaving? Uh, it is true that if someone has an outside offer, maybe it means they're a more talented individual. Uh, but it's also the case that there are lots of talented women out there who perhaps because of inability to move to a different region don't get those same outside offers. What really is potential? What does it mean for someone to be high potential? What are the characteristics that actually predict that someone will be a good manager? And part of the work that I've done uh, in other uh, papers is we've looked at uh, managers who have team building experience or a lot of experience working with others on lots of complex projects. And that seems to predict managerial quality more so than just uh, being very aggressive at sales. Um, some other questions that we uh, hope to study uh, is this idea of which party should change and what would be more effective. So you can imagine one way to mitigate the gender gap in promotions is for women themselves to become more assertive, to say, I want a promotion, to engage in self-promotion, and also to basically threaten to leave for another firm uh, so that their managers perceive that they are of high potential. Um, however, those activities can be rather wasteful in that it incentivizes both male and female employees uh, to network, to brag, and to seek a lot of outside offers. Um, there's a different type of response that firms could engage in, which is that they have a policy that they're going to not reward these behaviors and try to find other ways to assess performance and potential.